Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we are doing a comparison of nine snow foam cannons or lances. And the aim of the video is to provide you with a recommendation on the best overall product. Let's get started. Before we get started, some very important things. Please show your support to all YouTube channels, not just this one, by subscribing and hitting the bell notification button. You get asked to do that a lot, but it's the foundation of how we're able to survive as YouTubers. So please subscribe if you've seen my mug a few times and you haven't subscribed. The next thing is the Patreon community, guys. That's another way this channel is able to operate. So you can sign up to Patreon, all these different tierings through to a you know, basic access tiering to the private community where you can message me your detailing questions if you're new and all that sort of stuff, through to advanced viewings or monthly competitions, all these different tierings. And we also have an online training course, four hours, 23 minutes, that you can go and do. And again, the information for that training course is in the description. Another thing before we get started, guys, all the products you see here, apart from the Auto Glim Polar Blaster and the Angel Wax Lance there, the golden one, all of the other ones have been purchased. Those other two were sent in for reviews uh, a while back. So that allows you to decide as a viewer if this review is biased or not, which is very important. We're trying to run this fairly. I'm trying to, every single product in here, my aim is to tell you the good things about it and the bad things about it and provide a very solid overall recommendation. As always, two other very important bits of information. All the lances here have a quick release adapter on them, which is what I use, the quarter inch quick release gun. Make sure whenever you buy a snow foam lance, you specify the correct adapter fitment for your pressure washer type. All of these lances here are standard as they come. My PA lance, I've reverted back to a standard 1.25 millimeter orifice aperture, which they, I believe they all have and a new standard PA Lance filter on it. The only thing that's non-standard about this is the bottle, um, which helps it, stops it toppling over, but I'll factor in how that Lance was with the original um, bottle that came with it. So apart from that, they're all kind of standard. That's all the preface, preface to this. Now we need to get stuck in and go through the different categories. So first up is the cost of these products, guys. The most expensive product in this test is the Italian-made PF22, lance um, costing 45 to 50 pounds the next most expensive is the carbon collective i think it's ultimate snow foam lance costing 45 pounds and that's chinese made next up in joint fourth place if you like guys all costing 40 pounds first up we have the auto glim polar blaster and the identical Angel Wax Blizzard. So both these are £40, both of them are Chinese made. Yes, they're obviously being manufactured in the same place, guys. And as far as I can tell, they're exactly the same lance, even in terms of the orifice size, the foam performance, and all that sort of stuff. So we have tested them both in this video, but just obviously for your information, these are the same product as far as I can see. And here, tied with them, is the Italian made PA Lance, also at £40. The next up in third place is the Chinese made MJJC Foam Cannon Pro, costing £37. So one of few products to break below the £40 barrier. And next up in second place is the Chinese made Interdetailing Fat Boy Lance, costing a pretty reasonable £20. Then in joint first place on pure price and cost is the Blitz Detailing, I call it the Mini Lance, which costs £8. And this one here, which is a generic AliExpress lance that you can go and buy, it's gonna take a lot longer to get it shipped over, um, but also costs eight pounds. So it's fantastic value from these two. I mean, just the filters alone for some of these products over here can cost as much as five or six pounds, which is getting close to the cost of this lance. Um, so there has to be a trade-off, we'll cover that later on, but this is just purely looking at price. If you're just interested in cost, you're probably gonna go for one of these two lances. Um, but if you want more features at a low value, then it's probably going to be this one here. So that's our first category completed. Next up in this test, and it's very important to some people, is the quality of the foam that can be produced by these products. It's really important to some guys to produce thick foam that's almost fluffy and lays out nice 
on the car. So that's what we're looking at. Now my pressure washer, which is a Karcher K7 full control, has the ability for me to adjust the flow rate and the pressure through the system. So I can simulate a very low pressure system like a K2 by running it on speed pressure one, and I can simulate a massively high pressure system by running it on top whack. Um, so I can always whip up good foam on my system. Most of the testing has been done on the middle setting, which is the car wash setting, if you like, on my system. But I've also factored in low pressure as well. So if you're after thick foam, this test is for you. Now, in going from worst to best, the worst foam being produced in this test is from the Blitz Detailing little mini snow foam lance. It's the only one that doesn't have metal impellers or blades. Um, and the foam comes out in like branches, if you like, almost like strings within the fan. So the fan isn't nice and the foam is runny um, rather than thick and fluffy. There's a trade-off for you. Next up, guys, with a jump up in quality, but still not particularly good, was the interdetailing Fat Boy Lance. The fan out and the foam was a little bit more consistent, but I couldn't get it to whip up unless I literally cranked my system up to the ridiculous pressure that other people aren't gonna have. And even then it was nothing to write home about. Um, and then after that was the Alibaba generic cheap snow foam lance, which was similar to the interdetailing one. Just couldn't get it to whip up the thick foam. These three ones, in my opinion, you wouldn't buy if you were interested in getting thick foam. Let's move on. So next up guys, the good news is all of the rest of the lances from here on in can produce good foam. So there's, there's very little difference between them, but I'll go through and explain how I've ranked them. The MTM lance, when you get the pressure up high on it, the foam starts to become lovely, but at lower pressures, it feels like there isn't enough back pressure on this and it's perhaps going to benefit from upgrading the orifice to the 1.1 nozzle. So it was a game of two halves. At low pressure, the foam wasn't great. At high pressure, it started whipping it up really, really nicely. The Carbon Collective um, Ultimate Snow Foam Lance just produced slightly better foam as it comes out of the box than the MTM one. The foam was thicker. The only bad side with the Carbon Collective, again, is that the fan out on it, the streams weren't you know, the, the way it distributes all the foam, it wasn't clear, there was like little streams, so you get like a thicker bit at one section of the car, if you, if you get me. So the fan out could have been slightly nicer, but overall the foam was pretty good. And if we move down the line, this PA Lance with a 1.25 orifice still produces good foam. I typically run it again like the MTM. If you upgrade this to 1.1, it produces really good foam on lower pressures, but this seemed to have a slight edge and a more consistent fan out pattern than these two other products here. And finally guys, we're down to the top three and in joint second place, the Auto Glim and the Angel Wax. These produce slightly more consistent foam on the fan pattern and a slightly thicker foam at medium standard pressures and were decent at low pressures as well. So not bad foam coming out of these. And the winner, guys, if you're a foam fest and you like really nice fluffy foam, this product here, the MJJC Foam Cannon Pro, produced the nicest, lightest, fluffiest film of foam over the car. And it's like if you're spray painting something, you want that consistency of the foam when it's on a wider fan pattern. This was the best one. So if it's all about the quality of the foam, I think out of the box, this one is definitely the winner. So in last place on build quality, guys, let me just get this in focus, is the interdetailing fat boy lance. Now the things I notice is that the bottle is a lot thinner than the other products. There are sharp edges on the plastic, which don't, they're not gonna cut you unless you really go at them, but they just don't feel nice on the hand. I've also not been able to stop this spring in a leak. I've PTFE taped it twice and really talked it up. I think you're gonna need to play around with this and use thread locker to seal the threads properly and stop the leak on that. It's the only one that I've had leaking issues with. Another quality issue is when I go to unscrew, forgive the focus, there we go. When I go to unscrew this, you can see there, the actual cap isn't coming off the thread, it's unscrewing, it's dismantling it from up here. And even if I try and fix that and really torque it down, it still undoes and you have to grip it there and then turn it, which is fine when it's all bone dry, but when it's got slippery soap all over it, that keeps happening a lot to me. So 
that had the most niggles with it out of all of them. They're not disasters, but I haven't had limited problems with all the others, and that, that one's given me the most problems. In next place is the Blitz Detailing Mini Lance. Um, just one thing I noticed with this is the little gasket in here kept dropping out. It's got like a little rubber seal. I've, I've poked it back in quite heavily and it's stuck in there at the moment. The other thing is the lack of impellers here. I can actually see the filter behind it. So I don't think this has overall the same level of quality and all the components here seem more kind of plasticky and it's very light. But overall for the price point, it's, it's not badly made but it's just not as high quality as some of the other ones. Um, then this one here, the AliExpress one, this has given me no problems whatsoever. It's solid, it doesn't leak, it's quite heavy set. There's no major sharp edges, but I feel at this point, the lances up here are higher quality. Um, so in, in some ways, the quality of that is reasonably impressive, but. If we go down to these ones here, now we start to get into the kind of elite lances here, don't we? If we look at the Carbon Collective product, they give you this lovely bottle, you know, this hexagonal bottle that they've had to have made, you know, so it's bespoke and that all costs money. That's nice. However, when I first got, got the, the product out of the, out of the box, I found it quite difficult to make the thread up with the cap. Once you've got it and you've done it a few times, it's okay. I also have the same problem here with this undoing sometimes when I twist it. So it didn't go then. I've, look, you can see it there. I've, the, the difference is when I crank this tight, it's less likely to go than the interdetailing one, but that still has undone on me a few times and that can be a little bit frustrating. Apart from that, this part of the lance feels really heavy set a nice quality with no real sharp edges and everything you know is decent they've even gone to the trouble of coating like putting a clear coat a tinted clear coat like a chrome effect over the top of the um, metal components which makes it look a bit nicer um, so that overall it's not it's a decent effort on quality for me just a little couple of tiny little things have let it down and we'll talk a little bit more about this lance later on Next in the middle order is the Italian PA Lance, which is at a slight disadvantage because it looks a bit grubby because it's years old, but I've dropped this, I've hammered it, I've thrown it around and it will never stop working. You can always fix any issues with it. It's solid, it's well made. There's nothing that ever unscrews on you. Um, it's not in the top order because I think there's just some higher quality features going down here and like the little bolt on the top's rusted and it just, you know, it gets a little bit corroded and manky around here on these, these brass fitments, but overall it's a very solid product. Next up, we're getting to the top three, if you like. Again, in joint first place, um, we'll, take, we'll take the Angel Wax one as an example. Really heavy, well-made flask there with a nice grip on it. This never undoes. So you can't spin that off, this top bit off of any thread there. So it's never gonna let you down there. The, it's a nice heavy clunk when you, when you turn this dial. It just feels well set up. And um, even down to the screws that they've used there, it looks like a little stainless or a coated um, nut in the top, which doesn't look like it's gonna corrode. So good effort on quality on this particular product, especially for, for a Chinese made lance, the quality of that, you would think it was European, or I would anyway. Next up in second place on the overall quality, again, very heavy set made product. And again, it doesn't want to unwind on me. That's, that's either glued in or welded in, so it's not gonna untwist. It's got a little dangly ball on the end of it with a filter stuck in there as well, which has got to cost a little bit to make. Um, so the good bottle, good cap, everything's nice and shiny. The plastic is all nice and smooth on the ends. It has some extra features, which we'll talk about later on, but the way everything also unscrews on this lance just feels really good. It feels like a high quality product again, and I wouldn't know that that was Chinese. Um, 
So that's a worthy second place, in my opinion. Then we go over to the first place on build quality. I think this is where the, the MTM product really comes into its own. I love the little touches that, I love the way they've roughed off the texture there. So when you're holding it, you can actually grip it. It's gonna fly out your hand less when it's all covered in soap. But the cool part of this MTM product is the business end, this end, the way they've weighted. So you can adjust the direction, the axis of the foam, which is a really cool feature. But there's some really cool engineering gone into this that that is heavily set and it clicks into place. This is really light set. So when you turn this, you're never gonna accidentally adjust the axis. And that, some thought has gone into that, even with little grippers on there that you can get your hand in from when it's all kind of soaking wet and covered in slimy foam. And same with the, um, with the feed adjust, it clicks. So all those little touches, when you're holding it and you're using it, you appreciate the effort that's gone in to that part of the design. And I think overall, this perhaps is the best build quality of all of the products in this test. The MJJC does give it a run for its money though, and some people might argue otherwise, but that's my number one in terms of build quality. Next up, efficiency guys. So using the Wax is Dead Snow Foam, it's recommended ratio, we put 300 mil into every single lance, made sure that the lances were running with the best foam that they could produce for that recommended ratio, and then timed how long it took them to dispense that 300 mil. So the longer it takes, the more you can kind of cover if you like, although you can counter this premise by saying, well, you could lower the dilutions down of these ones. But either way, um, the product which churned through the, 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 the solution the quickest, so you could argue is the least efficient, was the MJJC product taking 32 seconds, and the PA Lance taking 35 in joint place with the Carbon Collective, also taking 35 seconds. Then after that was the Auto Glim at 40 seconds, and the Angel Wax at 41, so these are obviously identical, just a tiny timing difference there, I guess. And then the MTM taking 45 seconds, and then, interestingly, we're at the three best performers here are the cheaper ones, which didn't produce the thick foam, which actually kind of makes sense if you think about it. So it took 51 seconds for the generic Alibaba one to um, dispense all of that solution. 57 seconds for the interdetailing. And the most efficient product here, which noticeably goes through that solution a lot slower, almost twice the rate of the MJCC, is the Blitz detailing product. So if you like preserving your chemicals and using less chemicals, then out of the box, that's the order right there. Next up guys is topple factor. Now we know snow foam lances are always gonna be top heavy and prone to falling over, but that is not a difficult problem to solve. And when a lance falls over all the time, it can break itself, it can break other things, it can even damage your car, as I found out the hard way a couple of years back, which made me research wider bottle options back then when the, when the wide base ones weren't so readily available. A snow drift type thing that you can throw on your car. Very thick and white, very interesting. Still will be looking out. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar from Benson and Hedges. So let's just go through the results here, guys. Well, in last place, this PF22, as it comes out of the box with this bottle, has a major design flaw to the point that when the bottle is empty, you can't, even, you can't really even set it down without it slipping over. Now, you can put a different bottle on it, and there is another bottle available through MTM, which costs around 15 to 20 pounds um, in the UK, 20 if you can include delivery, that can help you with that particular problem. But this is the version, 
the PF22 version that is primarily available for people in Europe at a sensible price. And it has a major design flaw and the review needs to pick that up. Um, so much so that I've even seen people design their own bases to it and stick it on because they're desperate to stop this thing falling over. All the way through this testing over the last three, few months, this has probably fallen over about 40 times and it kind of drives me mad. Definitely in last place. After that, the generic Ali Barbar Lance, it, there's a big improvement, but it's still prone to falling over because it's so tall and the bottom can slide out of it when it's wet. The PA Lance, when I bought it, came with an identical bottle and was heavily prone to falling over. They do provide a different bottle now, slightly wider, um, but I can only guess at the improvement of that. I upgraded with this Dr. Dirt bottle that you can get, which fits these smaller threaded tops. And that really solves the problem, but that's still down here with the AliExpress one, um, because I'm judging it on how it came, not with, with that on there. So you wouldn't buy the PA one if, you, if, you, if this was your main priority, although, the, like I say, the latest bottle is improved. Now, we're starting to get to these more modern products here that have thought about toppling and have tried to create products which don't topple. The Carbon Collective one, is a noticeable improvement over these products here but it can still topple it can just a little bit more than these other ones especially when it's empty um, if it just had a slightly wider base as well it'd be improved but it's not particularly bad though it doesn't bug me that but you just need to be aware of it same with this auto glim and angel wax one much improved but still top heavy and it doesn't take that much for them to go okay so that's why that's ranked there and now we get to three that seem to be really good on this front. The little blitz detailing one, even though it's not as wide at the base as some of these others, it's so much lighter up here because of all the plastic parts. So it's really hard and I don't think, and it's kind of balanced as well. So this has never toppled on me and it's just fine on that front. So they've solved the, the topple problem. Uh, in second place with a really wide base is the inter-detailing Fatboy Lance. Even though it's not completely balanced, it's quite hard to knock this over. You'd have to really give it a whack. Oh. <laughs> Just like that. But it's pretty stable, guys. And then in first place for me is the MJJC Pro, which just feels really stable. It, it's, it's just, this has never gone over. And I don't think it's, you'd really, again, you'd have to really whack it. Um, so that's the most stable out of all of those products. So that's the topple test. In last place on features is the little mini BD snow foam lance, simply because it's the only one that doesn't have a rake adjust. You can adjust the axis, which is quite a level clever feature, but a rake adjust is a very handy thing because you can set it up how how it suits you. And you can adjust it in certain bits of the car, like if you're in the arches or you might want a wider fan, you know, all that sort of stuff. I, I'm always adjusting the rake. Um, I also find that the, the mixture um, dial doesn't seem to make that much difference on the performance of the product. And beyond that, there really aren't any features beyond just the scale there. So it's the most basic of all of them. Um, so it's almost like an improvised product. This It's a little emergency backup one almost. Very light as well. In next place, guys, the PA and the AliExpress one, they have the rake adjust and they have the mixture adjust. And then just, you know, beyond that, they don't have any, they don't have any filters on the, um, some of them have filters on the end of the tips here. You know, some of them have wide, wide, um, next so it's easier to pour stuff in so there's all these opportunities to upgrade the design now as some of these other ones have so these are a little bit in the past although you could argue that the features that they do have are all you need but that's down to you to decide um, my job is to kind of compare them now moving up in terms of features the angel wax and the auto glim products have that wide wide neck so it's easier to get the fluid in there they don't have any filter on the end and they don't have a scale on them, which I think is a missed trick. And then beyond that, you've just got the rake adjust and the mix adjust. So a good step up between this product and that product, just with the design of the flask. But these products over here take it a little bit, a little step further. 
Now the interdetailing one is very similar to, you know, features to the Auto Glim, except it does have a scale on there, which is useful, and I do want that on there. Um, but it also has a filter on there, so if you get any like calcification or any dirt in your, your bottle, it's not gonna get stuck inside the lance, so you're less likely to have to strip down your lance to clear it out, so um, just a couple more features. Now the Carbon Collective one, that also has the filter inside there, which is a good thing. Um, it does have the scale on it. However, this scale is very difficult to see through. You need to like, you need to <laughs> ridiculous levels of light to be able to see the liquid. And I, that scale is, is close to unusable in my opinion, um, but it's there. Uh, and it has the filter inside, as I've mentioned. Beyond that, you've just got the mix and the, um, the rake adjust. So uh, similar to the interdetailing really on features, you've got the cool looking hexagonal bottle as well, which is quite nice to grip. Next up on features, well, the MTM, you could argue maybe this doesn't have that many features, but I mentioned before the texture in the bottle, that's a nice little touch. It doesn't have a filter in there, so you could suck stuff up into your, into the, you know, the mechanisms in there, or the holes in there and block your lance a bit more. So they missed a the trick there. But I just think the quality of that feature there is worth so many marks and the way that that's weighted it's just a lovely touch and it's got patents on it and i wonder if the patents or patents are to protect the design that they've put in on this bit and that's really really good so i think the mtm should be in second just going to lean it against the other one now in first place on features this thing has so many features it like the mtm product I did, it also has the rake adjust, but it doesn't have the click. The weighting, look at that. So the weighting isn't quite as good so that you almost need three hands to operate this. Whereas the MTM, you don't. You can move that and then move this. Whereas, so that needs to be set heavier so it clicks or it's weighted heavier. And it needs to be more obvious where the central lineup point is so you can get it lined up or you're forever compensating and readjusting to get it straight, or iron anyway. Um, but you have the axis adjust as well as the rake adjust. You have your standard um, mixer, but it does have a nice thick line on there so you can use that line to kind of guide you. Some of them don't all have that. Um, it also, this is the clever thing, if you want to play around with this, if you want to adjust your orifice, you don't have to ever use spanners it's got a patented design, and that's unusual for Chinese products. And MJC, MJJC are a manufacturer, so they've patented designs, and I like that, especially from a Chinese company. So they're doing different things and protecting their ideas. Good, good job. They also, so that screws back in. So no PTFE tape, no spanners. If you want to adjust the filters, you just push that pin out, off that comes and you can put another filter on again without having to go to all the spanners like some of the other ones. Okay, so that's really, really cool. You also have rubber bungs in there and you can pull these bungs out. They're a bit fiddly. When you pull them out, it's exposed. Sorry, it's out of focus. But there's a hole there now and the air will draw through. But if you want to, if you want to foam the underside of a car and you've got this up at weird angles and you don't want liquid running out on your arms and stuff like that, which is nice. You can put these rubber bungs in and you get some spares. And I've got no idea, oh, there we go, back in. So you get some spare rubber bungs. That's a nice touch. I mean, I wouldn't have never even asked for that, but it's a nice touch. It might be important to some people. You also have a pendulum on there so that it, if you're working at angles, it's gonna stop this from stalling out more than the others because this is gonna move around bit like you get on the trigger sprayers. Now it does make a rattly noise, um, but that also serves to mix the solution up as well, which could be quite nice. Uh, and that has a filter in it. So that is impressive. It also, in the bottle, they've also put little grooves so that when you want to get this thing off when it's all wet and slippery, you've got, you can grip it and it comes off. Um, so this product for me has by far and away the most features 
It also comes with a 1.1 orifice in the box. So you can just unscrew that, get a screwdriver and put your 1.1 orifice in. It also comes with two filters and the filters are not cheaper ones. They look high quality to me. And those filters can cost like five pounds, five or six pounds for the, um, you'll have them delivered as well for the PA Lance, for example. Um, prices may vary. So you get at least 10 pounds worth of filters and you know you get more filters with this than some of the other lances cost so that's a good little real world saving that you'll get with this particular product uh, it also the bottle is also 120 millimeters so if you want to mix up 10 to 1 which is a very common ratio you're not going to have to convert it down scale that down to one you know which is awkward maths you can always do your 10 to 1 so you could put in one liter of water to 100 mil of product some of the other ones you can't do that because you'll overfill so they've really thought about some of the design elements on this mjcc uh, mjjc and i'm just checking to make sure i haven't um, missed anything no okay Congratulations for making it this far guys, we're at the finale where we announce third place, second place and first place, the overall winner. In third place it is the Auto Glim Polar Blaster or the Angel Wax Blizzard, the same product as we said. Why is this in third place? I think this Lance, I'm just going to take the Auto Glim one as an example. The wide neck is a nice feature, it produces good foam, it won't topple over unless you really whack it. It's heavily set, it's sturdy, the build quality is nice. 40 quid, it's not the most expensive, it could be a little bit cheaper. But I think this is a robust lance and I would take this over the PA lance with the wider, with the narrow neck. I think it just, it's, a, it's an evolution in the right direction. So it's a, overall it's a decent quality product. In second place, this perhaps might be controversial, it is the Alibaba cheap generic lance, if you like. I think for £7.99, this is the no-nonsense lance that's actually pretty solid and will last you a lifetime. You won't get the thick foam out of it. That's the only thing. Yes, again, it's prone to toppling over a little bit, although you can set it down. It doesn't have the best quality filters at all, and the foam isn't great, but... It just represents really good value and essentially it's not that different to some of the other products that are like could be more than four times the price. So this has to come second for me. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about that. Some people don't like the really cheap stuff. And finally the overall winner it is the MJJC Pro Lance. I said time and time again the product that has to win has to do everything well. First of all, the price point is decent at £37. The quality and the build on this is good. I love the fact it has patents. It's the only one you don't really need spanners on. I could whip this off, put the new orifice in within, within a minute if I had a lower pressure system. And that would just create a little bit more back pressure. It also produces the best foam, which is really important to people. And the most features, even down to the size of the flask, the wide base so it can't topple over, the swinging pendulum, the filter, the little bungs to seal it up if, you, if you're cleaning undercarriages. That's a lot of thought's gone into this. I've talked about where it could be improved, and that is just the having the rake adjust and the axis adjust. Um, it's hard to control them without having three hands when you've got the gun there as well. So you can't control it adjust it so well when you're actually feeding out the product you've engaged the rake when the product's running so that's the only frustrating thing but this is definitely the worthy winner the two extra filters on top of the one that you get there so you get three filters in total is really good because those filters are expensive and that's enough to kind of last a lifetime as well if i haven't already said that um, so the overall winner is the mjjc pro foam Cannon. And finally, guys, as always, huge thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you feel about the final three. Was there any you feel should have made it on here? Was there any snow foam lances or cannons that weren't in the test you'd have liked to have seen? Let me know. Always interested in that. Uh, nothing else to say, really, guys, apart from, as always, the aim of the video is to give you a strong recommendation. No brands are paying me to give you, you know, any recommendations here. The video generally loses. This video will cost more to make than it produces. So let's get the violin out. But 
overall it's an important video to make and I think uh, it ticks a box I've been wanting to tick for a long time and hopefully um, I've given you every good thing and bad thing about each lance which is important so even if you don't agree with me you could go elsewhere with the recommendations on things which suit what you're looking for and that's how we've done it so there should be something in there for everyone on this video thanks for watching see you soon on the forensics detailing channel holding on to what i knew but the moment's gone where was i when